Okay guys, so today we're gonna to learn about factoring. Uh, this is what our X factor uh, assignment was leading us into last time. Uh, so before we talk about factoring something backwards, uh, let's talk about how we get to these things that we need to factor, okay? So our topic today is factoring quadratic trinomials in the form of AX squared plus BX plus C, where A is equal to one. Okay, so that means there's only gonna be a one or just an X squared in the front of these. Okay, to see where we get things that look like this, where A, B, and C here will all represent numbers, we're going to go ahead and multiply these three together. And I think it's important to understand uh, what this looks like when we go forward, it will help us try to go backwards or hopefully make sense of what we're doing when we go backwards. Okay, so when you multiply two binomials together like this, you guys might have heard the little acronym FOIL, maybe you've forgotten what it was, don't worry about it, you don't need FOIL to do this. Okay, but what I do need to do is take this first term, x, and multiply it by both terms, and there's two terms, remember terms are separated by addition or subtraction, uh, in the second set of parentheses. So let's do that, x times x makes x squared, and then x times five makes positive five x, so plus five x. Okay, now we can come back and distribute this positive five. So positive five times x gives us another five x, and five times five gives us 25. Okay, it does say to simplify at the end as well. So we do have some like terms in the middle here that we would combine. Five x's and another five x's gives us 10 x plus 25. Okay, so that's what this would look like when we multiply it together, we end up getting x squared plus 10 x plus 25. Okay, let's try our next one here. X times x. Okay, distributing our x again gives us x squared. x times four gives us positive four x. Come back and distribute this positive three. Three times x makes three x. And three times four gives us positive 12. And once again in the middle, we have a couple terms with x to the first power we can combine. Four x's and three x's makes seven x's plus 12. So x squared plus 7x plus 12. Okay, our last one, x times x again is x squared. x times 4 is 4x. Negative 1s, so we are keeping that sign with it. Negative 1 times x is negative 1x. You can just write negative x or you can put the 1 there, it's fine. Negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. Okay, so again, we have these like terms in the middle. So I have dropped down my x squared. Positive four and negative one make positive three x minus four. Okay, and the whole reason that we did this is we're trying to figure out how do I go from these back to what we started with. Okay, so specifically, you notice that all of them start with x squared. That was pretty much generic between uh, all of these terms here, x squared, x squared, x squared. So I know that if I get x squared, essentially we started with something that was x times x, right? That's what got us that first x squared term every time. So I know if it starts with x squared, it starts with x times x for these factors. And that's what we're gonna try to do is go backwards to these factors. Okay, so now the next question becomes, what about these other two numbers? They all have this X in the middle, okay? But I think what's gonna help us break them back into these original factors, what we started with is those extra numbers in there, the three and the four, uh, or the 10 and the 25. So let's start with the one on the left here. So let's look at these two numbers specifically at 25 and 10. So 25 and 10. Okay, so how did we get to these numbers? Why did we end up with a positive 25 and a positive 10? So we wanna think about where they came from, specifically looking back at the beginning here. Okay, so if I get rid of some of this stuff. Okay, so how did we, how would we get this positive five and positive five? Why did we end up with a 25 and a positive 10? Okay, and I chose fives because hopefully it's a little more obvious here. We knew in that very last step, 
when I was distributing my five, right? We did five times x and then five times five. That, that five times five, those two numbers multiplied together is what gave us 25. So I kind of know when I'm breaking up my factors here or trying to find my factors, I know it starts with x times x. That's what gave me x squared. And I know I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to 25. So whatever this is, it needs to multiply to positive 25. So one way of doing that is some people will start a factor pair list. So you list all the numbers that multiply to 25. One and 25, uh, two doesn't go in there, three doesn't go in there, four doesn't go in there, but five does five times, and I think that's it. Anything after that would be a repeat that no longer goes in. Okay, so it's a pretty small list, um, but now how do I use this 10 to help me figure out kind of which set to use here? Is it one and 25 or five and five? Obviously we know the answer because we started with it, but why did we end up with this 10x? We ended up with 10x because we had a 5x and another 5x. And we got that from when I did x times 5 in this step and 5 times x. So we always end up with these two values here that will add up to our middle term. Okay, so what we're looking for are two numbers that multiply to positive 25 but add up to positive 10. And of course, those two numbers are 5 and 5. Positive 5 and positive 5. Multiply to 25 and add up to 10. Okay, similarly, we'll switch to a different color here. Uh, for our second one, if I was trying to break this back up into its factors, uh, let's see, I know because it starts with x squared that it should be x and x. That would give me x squared as my first term. And then the first place we'll look is at this 12. So I want to know I know my two numbers need to multiply to positive 12. So it could be 1 and 12, it could be 2 and 6, uh, 3 and 4, and then 4 and 3 would be a repeat, so I can stop my list there. Okay, so this gives me some pairs, some numbers to kind of rifle through. Um, and keep in mind that just because they multiply to positive 12, it could be a positive times a positive, or it could be a negative times a negative. Okay, so it could be either of those cases we'll have to look at our middle term to help us out. So this middle term, the number in front of x is positive seven. So I need two numbers that multiply to positive 12 and add up to positive seven. And I think that's positive three and positive four. So positive three and positive four. Okay, a common question here would be, does it matter if I put the three or four in which place? And the answer is no, it doesn't matter. As long as I have x plus three and x plus four, that's fine, we have the correct factors. Okay, uh, so if we were to try our last one, again, we look at this last value, this is what they need to multiply to. So I need two numbers that multiply to negative four. Well, if we think about our rules of multiplication, a positive times a positive is positive. A negative times a negative is positive. The only way to get a negative answer is if I have a negative times a positive, that gives us a negative answer, or a positive times a negative. So if I have one of each and we're multiplying, we get a negative answer. So that actually tells me right away, if this last value is negative, they have to multiply to a negative number, I already know one's gonna be plus and one's gonna be minus. Okay, it doesn't matter which one you put the plus or minus with, but the numbers that, that go next to them need to be in the correct place. Okay, so I need numbers that multiply to negative four, so all my factors of four, and we don't have to worry about the negative sign yet, but one and four, two and two, and that's it. So which one of these, now I know one's positive and one's negative, but they need to add up to positive three here. And to add up to positive three, uh, the bigger number needs to be positive. So in this case, and I guess twos are, it doesn't matter which one you make positive or negative, they're the same. But the bigger number needs to be positive, and I think those are our values right there. Negative one and positive four. So negative one and positive four, and of course that matches what we have above. And again, the order is a little bit different than what we started with, but that's fine as long as both are there. And that's what we're looking at today, is taking things in this form. These are called quadratic trinomials. Quadratic because we have x squared. Trinomial because there are one, two, three terms. Trinomial just means three terms.
So we're starting things that look like this, and we're gonna be trying to break them into these two factors. Okay, so let's try a little bit more of this. Okay, so here we have three more examples. This time they're already in their trinomial form, and our directions are going to be to factor. Okay, so let's try doing this. Uh, to get to x squared, we said that they were both gonna start off with x times x in these two factors, so x times x. So the first in each should be an x and an x, and we're trying to figure out what numbers go next to them, plus or minus, and, and what numbers. Okay, so they need to multiply to eight. Okay, so some of you guys have done the, maybe the x factor way of doing these as well, right? We talked about that a little bit last time. Uh, so this would be the number that goes up top that they're multiplying to is positive eight. Uh, and then they need to add up to this middle term, positive six. So that's what they need to add up to. And this was just where we kind of wrote our two numbers. Uh, so it's just a, another visual way of trying to find these two numbers for us. So I need two numbers that multiply to eight, add up to six. Of course, our factors of eight are one and eight, two and four, and I think that's it. Uh, to, add, to multiply to positive eight, they need to be the same signs. So either both plus or both minus. But since they have to add up to positive six, I don't think it can be a negative and a negative a negative number plus a negative number is just a bigger negative number. So that middle number kind of gives it away this time. I think it's gotta be plus. So if they're both positive, the ones that multiply to eight and add up to six are two and four. So this was our pair, positive two and positive four. It doesn't matter which order you put them in, x plus two times x plus four. Okay, let's try a next example. So again, it starts with x squared. So if this is factorable, this should be x times x. And I'm gonna, let's go ahead and set up that x factor here. So we need two numbers that multiply to positive five and add up to positive six. Okay, so again, we list the factors of five, which is a pretty short list because five's prime. It's just one in five. Okay, and again, to multiply to positive five, it either has to be plus and plus, or a negative times a negative. So, but to add up to positive six, I think our numbers need to both be positive. So if they're both positive, and I only got one pair, I'm pretty sure it's gotta be positive one and positive five, but just to check, oops, that's not a five. If I multiply these together, that does give me positive five, and if I add them, it gets me positive six. So yep, positive one and positive five, there are our factors. And you can check if this is correct if we did what we did in the beginning. Like if you actually took these and multiplied them back together, x times x, x times five, one times x, one times five, and combine those middle terms, you should get what we started with, okay? So we're just breaking it into this factored form. Okay, let's try one more example over here. Again, to get to x squared, we know it should be x and x. They need to multiply to positive 16. Okay, so we can set up that little x factor. I'm gonna multiply to positive 16. Uh, and the middle number is negative eight, so they need to add up to negative eight. So once again, if they multiply to a positive number, it either has to be a positive and a positive, or a negative and a negative. Okay, and this time they're adding up to negative eight. So I don't think it could be a positive and a positive. I think it is going to be our negative and negative case. So if we list our factor pairs of 16, one and 16, two and eight, uh, three doesn't go in there, but four does four times. And I think that's it. So we're looking for the pairs that would, and I know both are negative. So if I want, I can put those negative signs with them. The pairs that multiply to positive 16 and add up to negative eight are negative four and negative four. So x minus four times x minus four. And if you left it like that, that's okay. But technically it is something times itself twice. That is a terrible rectangle. It is something times itself twice. So another way of writing that same answer is you could write it as x minus four squared. Like 
with an exponent since it is the exact same thing times itself twice. Okay, so either one of those would be acceptable answers there since it was the same exact factor. Okay, so now I wanna introduce uh, some kind of mental shortcuts that will help us just kind of speed through this a little bit. This is a good mental exercise though. Okay, for our ax squared plus bx plus c, uh, specifically this is for values of x that equal one. So if I have that, or sorry, a equals one. Okay, so we have some shortcuts here. It says if c, which is the constant at the end, so that would be like up here, uh, the eight, the five, or the 16, that would be our c value. Okay, if it is a positive number, as we noted as we did some of these, it either has to be, my factors will have the same signs. Okay, either plus and plus or minus and minus. It has to be a positive times a positive or negative times a negative. And the sign of b, which is our middle term, so in this case, I knew they had to be the same signs. And the sign of b, which is a positive sign, actually tells me they're both gonna be positive. Uh, in the third example, I knew they had to multiply to positive 16, so they're the same signs. And the middle term told me they're both negative. So it's just a quick way of setting up like x minus x minus. Okay, after we know what our sign setups are, we're gonna look for factors of c. So that's like with our factor pair lists. Okay, so factors of c that add up to the middle term b. So that's kind of like completing our x factor there. Okay, but they need to add up to the middle term b. However, if my c value is negative and we haven't done these examples yet, we're going to. So in fact, let me pause and let's add in some new examples. Okay, so here's some examples below. So let's try this out and we'll think about it the way we did before and with our x factor and then we'll come back and talk about this step. Okay, so once again, if I'm factoring this out, because it has an x squared, we know it's gonna be x times x. Uh, and as we set up our x factor, we know that we need two numbers that multiply to negative 10, so they multiply to that last number, and add up to negative three. Okay, so we could list our factors of 10, which are one and 10, and two and five. Okay, but in this case, because they multiply to negative 10, as we talked about earlier, the only way to multiply and get a negative answer is if we have one positive and one negative. So we know these end up having kind of opposite signs here. And in fact, that's what back up here, our step actually says, if C, that last term like 10 here is negative, that tells us our factors will have the opposite signs like a plus and a minus. Uh, and then we're gonna look for factors of C, as we'll see in a second. Don't read this next line, actually. Let's finish our X factor. So which ones of these multiply to negative 10 and add up to negative three? Uh, well, we know one's positive and one's negative. And since our what they add up to is negative, I think the bigger number needs to be negative. And I think the pair we're looking for this time is two and negative five. So positive two, negative five. Five. And yet those do multiply to negative 10, they add up to negative three. So we'll put the two at the positive sign and the five with the negative sign. Okay, another way of thinking about this is when you add a positive and negative number, it's kind of like subtracting the bigger number from the smaller number. Um, so you could think of that as looking for factors of C that subtract to B. So which of these pairs subtract to the number three itself? Uh, I don't know if that's more confusing or not. Maybe don't worry about that step. <laughs> okay, but basically just finish our x factor, make sure that these do add up though to negative three. That's important that they go with the correct signs there. Okay, let's do our next one. Uh, this is going to be x and x. Okay, uh, so let's see. Oh, they multiply to positive 20. So this is like some of the above examples. So that means they're the same signs, either plus and plus or minus and minus. And in this case, because they add up to negative 12, I think they're both gonna be minus. Okay, so we can set up our x factor. They need to multiply to positive 20 and add up to negative 12. So if we did a factor pair list for 20, we got one and 20, two and 10. Uh, three doesn't go in there, of course. Four doesn't go in there. Uh, oops, sorry, four does go in there, of course, right? Four and five, sorry. And then five and four would be a repeat. 
So we don't need to keep going. That's our complete list. So if they're both negative, we need to know which pair would add up to negative 12. I think it's these guys in the middle, negative two and negative 10. And it doesn't matter which order you put them in as long as they're with the correct signs. And this time they're both negative, so it's even less of a big deal. Okay, all right, we got one more example to go over here. So let's try this one. Uh, so again, it's got to be x and x to get us to this x squared. And then we look at c. Uh, to multiply to negative 24, we need one positive and one negative. Uh, then we can set up our x factor. We know the two numbers we're looking for to fill in need to multiply to negative 24. And they need to add up to positive 5. So I have to add up to the middle term, multiply to the last term. Okay, so to find our two values, we can make a factor pair list for 24. 24 does have a lot of factors. 1 and 24, uh, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, 4 and 6, 5 doesn't go in there, and then 6 would be a repeat. So we can stop there. Okay, so 1's positive, 1's negative, but they need to add up to positive 5. That tells me the bigger number has to be positive. So the bigger number is positive, the smaller number is negative. So which of these pairs, when we add them together, would give me positive five? It's going to be our negative three and positive eight. So put the eight with our positive sign, the three with the negative sign, and these are our two factors that if we multiply them back together, like we did the very first examples in the notes, we would get back to this when we simplify. Okay, so factoring like we practice today is actually really important because we're gonna add extra steps in when there's a number in front of x squared that's not one. Okay, so what this is, this is a, a, like an x factor game where it's giving me a, a quadratic up top and it only does a equals one, so one in front of x squared, but it gives us a quadratic that we go, can go through and, and basically practice. We need to find two numbers that multiply to negative eight and add up to positive two um, and if you're stuck, sometimes you can just come up with them in your head. So I know they're opposite signs. So one's positive, one's negative. Um, and they have to add up to positive two. So the bigger number is positive. I think positive four and negative two. Okay, but if I'm stuck, uh, make a factor pair list. Practice that by hand, because that's actually really important. And if maybe you miss a factor, you can press this little hint over here on the side, uh, or you can press F for the factor pair hint on the keyboard. Um, and that will give you this factor pair list to look through. And of course we can check this by either hitting enter or pressing the enter button. And there are my factors, x plus four, x minus two, we did get it correct. Okay, so this time I'd be looking for one where they multiply to negative three, add up to negative two. So if they multiply to negative three, they should be opposite signs. One's positive, one's negative. Uh, three is only has two factors, one and three. Um, right, so even if I did the little hint here, yeah, one and three. So the bigger number needs to be negative. So negative three and positive one, I think is what we're looking for. Boom, shakalaka, x minus three times x plus one would be our factors. Okay, so you can just go through and do some of these. I mean, like look at 40, it's got a lot of factor pairs there, right? And if you get them wrong, if you're like, ah, it's five and eight, it's, it's gonna give you a hint again, what you're looking to multiply and add to, and to just keep trying, hopefully find the answer for that one before you move on. So just a free tool, I'll link, I'll put a link to this directly in the description. It's also in your homework four on the homework page, if you scroll past the homework, um, or I'll put a link directly to it in the description of the video. Uh, but factoring like this is really important. You're actually gonna do a lot of this factoring throughout the year, so a really important skill Please make sure that if you don't understand something, hopefully you go back and watch this video again. Pause, take notes, rewind. You really need to understand this lesson to be successful in our next lesson and a whole bunch more throughout the year. Okay, factoring is a really big part of, of this year. So if you have questions or something, make sure you ask, make sure to practice. This is a great tool to do so outside of homework. Um, can't stress enough though, really important skill. All right, that's it for the notes today. Thanks guys.